Welcome to Geeks of the North, a hobby and gaming podcast in the Dolph of Angus. We're here to paint some miniatures and talk about the hobby, so why don't you sit back, relax, grab a paintbrush, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to Geeks of the North, your hobby and gaming podcast in the Dolph of Angus. As always, I'm your host, Paul Filio, here once again this week with my my beloved co-host, Antoine Bergeron. Hello. How's it going, Antoine? Good. I'm a being. Woohoo! Yeah. The... So for for people who are not in the know, that's the first time since or since our last recording. So yeah. that's why I'm happy. I feel like breaking <laughs> into that Frozen song, you know, for the first time in forever. Mm-hmm. If it what? was Steve, it was it would already been done in French, even. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Frozen is um, my greatest savior and my greatest bane. <laughs> Because when the kids are being unruly and restless and crazy, put on Frozen, everything stops. They are enthralled. The downside is I have you to listen. Stop it. Yeah, and I, and I have to listen to every Frozen song like on perma repeat and have for the last two years. Mm. So when it came out, my son liked it, but it was not enough. My wife loved it, so. We were listening to the movie pretty often, but the soundtrack was also always on in the car, in the house. It's um, <sighs> it is a great film, uh, a great animated film, a great soundtrack. You know, fantastic singing, uh, musical compositions, excellent. Um, but even with that, there's only so much. Any human can take of anything. Yeah. Uh, between that movie and um, uh, Greatest Showman, the Hugh Jackman movie from last summer or whatever, mm -hmm. those soundtracks are pretty much all I ever hear now. Because <laughs> I get in the car and my son will start screaming, Greatest Show! Greatest Show! My son can't even say his own name, but he knows how to say Greatest Show. <laughs> <laughs> But why would he need to say his own name right now? No, this is... Well, he can't say my name. He can't say much, right? He's being two and all. But, um... Yeah. But, yeah. I'll have to say, uh... Frozen. It's, yeah. It's, um... It's a thing. It's a reference. And the, the tunes are so easy to plug and start to sing. Because, like, let it go. Or... Yeah. There's so many, there's so many time it can be plugged into conversations that, and then people start saying. Well, that's like common phrase, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I was there, I played in a fantasy tournament with Steve once. Mm hmm. Where during deployment, um, he would play Let It Go in French. On the speaker or something? On his phone or whatever. Yeah. We were at a tournament in the States at Adepticon, right? So it's not like anyone else understood what the hell the song was. I mean, they knew it was Let It Go. Yeah, just from the, the, the sound. Just from the tone, <laughs> right? The, they knew the music, but they couldn't figure out why it was in French and why Steve was playing it. <laughs> hell, I was partnered with Steve, but I couldn't figure out why he was playing it. But I, th I think he was kind of like in that same boat that I'm in now, where his kids played it nonstop, and it was just like he was one with the Frozen. There's also the Steve effect. Steve can be special at times. Um, I liken him unto Rain Man. He's the, he's kind of the idiot savant of the group. <laughs> <laughs> no, <clears throat> but no, he uh, Steve Steve loves being Steve. What was he? What was he? He sent us the other week in our Facebook chat, and I was like, "Why taxidermy fails?" Yeah. Who else would we know that would follow a, you know, Reddit group or Facebook group or something dedicated Twitter feed dedicated to taxidermy fails? That that's a Steve right there. <laughs> that that sums him up, right? And yep. he he's not a it's just odd cuz he's not a gruesome type of guy, like Nope. But he he just loves like things that are odd, I guess you could say. I don't know how else to put it. It's a good way to put it. Oh, well. We love him anyway. He is our Steve. You love that and all the garbage food with garbage food with too much sugar in it. 
Everything yeah. with limited edition on it or something like that. Oh, yeah. Every every variety of limited edition uh, Oreos uh, must be his. <laughs> uh, let me know if I go off mic. I actually uh, have switched back to a, an older and different style of mic, which hopefully will provide better audio quality than my my Yeti was. And uh, If you pay attention to where you are. <laughs> but I, I have to stay in front of the mic, so it's less forgiving because it's a directional mic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying not to move around too much, but I, I tend to go all over the place while I paint, as I look for paints and things. All right. Uh, yeah. So, so what are you painting right now? Speaking well, right of now, painting. I'm working on some Guild Ball. I'm back on that. Um, I'm painting uh, Fathom and Yukai from my fisherman team. Um, Yukai is the new captain for the fish, and... Fathom is a navigator's player that is uh, multi-team, so she can play for my fisherman. Uh, she's considered to be one of the best strikers in the game. I uh, can't seem to make her do anything. But I'm assuming the internet's right and I'm wrong, so I'm painting her. I told Steve I wasn't going to paint her because I thought she was useless, and I, I nearly gave him a heart attack. <laughs> but then again, I, I'm often full of unconventional wisdom when it comes to ball, And I use the word wisdom lately. Um, well, sometimes play styles or just too uh, random luck or bad luck makes the model not work for you. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And, uh, you know, there's just models, you know, it's like the angel thing, right? Yep. I was the only man in the universe that liked her. And Steve kept telling me, don't play her, don't play her, she's terrible. And every game I'd score two goals with her and be like, how terrible is she again? And he's like, yeah, but it's you. Like, okay, well, it's me, but I'm the one playing, so I guess it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> On my side, I'm painting a garbage bag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that won't uh, be long to do. <laughs> so uh, I have other terrain marker to work on, and after that, it's probably going to be uh, back to Veteran Gutter. So some guild ball for me, too. Yeah, you probably should have mentioned uh, right away that that was a terrain thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Paul found some a bunch of garbage bins and garbage cans and two vending machines uh, for, as uh, printable files. So he printed a bunch of them, and I'm printing them right now for Pulp City or if we ever... <laughs> paint or Batman miniatures or any other modern or pulp uh, pulp models we ever play. But mainly Pulp City. To have stuff to throw on. Yeah, we gotta have stuff to throw at each other, right? Yeah, but it's not like we're missing stuff to throw at each other right now. I have a lot of it and you just provided a bunch more. So right now what we're missing is more bigger buildings. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe I'll um, maybe I'll pick up some stuff at uh, Depticon from Muse or something. They have the uh, the pre-painted uh, MDF stuff or the pre-colored. Mm-hmm. Well, Muse do that too. Yep, they start doing that because they all play Batman, right? Okay. So it's essentially a uh, I know like a laser for, laser for, printed on a oh yeah, go, on go. MDF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's other companies. I think Foregrounds does it or something like that too. Could be. Yeah. Well, another of the MBF uh, terrain maker. Um, I know it's not particularly cheap for Muse. No, that's not a good color for this. Yeah, I, I don't think any pre-printed MDF is cheap. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, for sure. And I, I wasn't trying to imply that it was, you know, overpriced. It was just, it ain't cheap. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, mind you, there will be a lot of, like, MDF guys here. So maybe, uh, I'll take a look first, because painting buildings is not exactly hard. We have airbrushes. So. Mm-hmm. After that, it's how much detail and weathering you really want to do. Exactly. And how much is already painted on, so... Yeah. That might decide more if you want to invest in it or not. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, I'm humming because I'm painting this model, and I don't know exactly what I'm painting. Like, I'm putting color on, but I have... I have no clue what this is. She's got like a a skirt thing on her leg, and it 
It's confusing me. There's some sort of detail in it, but I can't figure out what that detail is. So maybe I'll just move on to another part of the model and I'll try to see if I can find a painted one. Yeah, to the internet. Yeah. I'll be honest, I have not had much luck finding a well-painted uh, limited edition Fathom. Mm -hmm. uh, at least not with... And I keep hitting my mic, that can't be good. Um, at least not with good angles to a lot of the parts I'm having trouble with. Oh, well, yeah. You know, because they don't necessarily focus on the... Uh, <laughs> her leading leg uh, from the backside behind her weapon <laughs> where, like, like, where the thing is that I'm trying to paint right now. I wonder why. Yeah, well, exactly, right? And I'm, I'm not expecting anyone to. It's, that seems like an unreasonable expectation on my part. And I do my best not to have those. Mm -hmm. I don't always succeed. <laughs> but I do my best. So that's what we've, we are working on right now. What have you worked on during the week? Oh, boy. Hold on here. Let me finish mangling this one little section, and I'll talk about that. Um, yeah, I've had a, a pretty productive week or so, or week and a half at this point. I uh, I often go through periods where I, I don't really paint anything. Um, like, the year started super slow for me, and then uh, currently I'm in overdrive. So uh, this week... I uh, finished painting um, Cyan for Judgment. Yeah, you were working on her uh, last week. Yeah, so that's one more model done. Um, I mean, it's finished not perfect, I think is the uh, the expression. Mm -hmm. But she's not to the level of your Don Rekar. That's what you mean? Yeah, and that's fine. Don Rekar's not perfect either. But, but yeah, she she's generally, I consider, a, a lower... You know, a little bit lower quality paint job. The thing is, the figure is a lot simpler too. Mm -hmm. um, Dara Car really lends himself to to kind of exploring the paint job a little bit. Uh, Cyan is a is an elf chick uh, standing there and you know with a cool magic user pose on. So while she looks really cool, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on there that you can play with. So. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I wish I could say the same for what I'm doing right now. <laughs> um, aside from that... Okay, hold on. Yeah, that more or less looks okay. All right. Aside from that, I... um, Oh! Uh, I've been playing some Guild Ball last week, and I played the uh, the Order, which are the kind of the churchgoers in Guild Ball, and they have a new rule they introduced last week, so I wanted to try it, and basically they get to play with a, a second ball on the field, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's not a regular ball, so you have to differentiate it. That's right. And it's... Um, a, a gentleman, I don't remember his name, had uh, created a 3D file for a, a ball of light, which is what it is, and he designed it so you could actually put an LED in it, like one of those little tea light LEDs or a little 5-volt LED, and make it light up, which was really cool, but wasn't really something I, <laughs> I wanted to do. So um, I took his file, and I printed it as it was, with just no LED, and I mounted it on a base, and it looked really nice, but because it was sized to fit uh, an LED, the scale's all wrong, and the scale was driving me nuts. Um, if, if this was, like... Um, like a real soccer game, it'd be like the ball was the size of one of those giant inflatable beach balls. <laughs> so it's just, it just didn't make sense. But I liked the, the look of his ball. Uh, the other thing about it was the way his ball uh, rests, I guess you could say, is it's got kind of like um, knobs on each side of it, but it rests like perfectly on center, like with one knob facing up in the air and all the other knobs facing out at 90 degrees, which... And it's got bands around it, like uh, straps, almost like a barrel, in all the different directions. Which which means the ball would never sit like that. Right? It, it would be off off balance, and it would just roll over onto its side. Yeah. Um, and it bothered me that this ball wasn't like that. Uh, because the design was fairly simple, I, I just redesigned the ball. Like, I, I just created a new file and uh, designed another uh, ball based off his, but at a smaller scale, uh, resting at a more natural angle. And then I uh, also uh, designed it, uh, built onto its own base, 
because every time I get one of these balls or I, you know, get a ball with a team, I always have to try to find a 30 millimeter base to put it on. So I just printed or made the file with the, the base already attached. And that came out pretty nice. I painted one up for the team. Uh, also, uh, 3D printing stuff. I printed um, a bunch of uh, barriers and obstacles for Guild Ball uh, using um, these little dirt golems that I found on Thingiverse. <laughs> Uh, and because uh, the minor, uh, the minor team launched last week for Guild Ball, and the miners, of course, have like a, a drilling machine, a bunch of stuff, and they run out of shovels. And I thought it'd be cool if uh, the obstacle markers, all these little dirt golems that have been disturbed by the miners, actually doing their thing. So they're kind of popping up on the pitch in the middle of the game. So I printed a bunch of those and started painting some. Yeah, they are cool. Like when they were released originally. I almost put them in the news section of the show. I thought we skipped a week or something like that, and it was no longer news by the time we recorded that time. But uh, yeah, they, they are cool. They uh, they really really are. I uh, I have to say I I didn't know they existed. So, and it's funny because it's an artist who designed them that I I follow. Like I look at a lot of his stuff because he makes some really really cool things, and he's run a couple kickstarters and. Uh, he has a Patreon, which I've more than once considered supporting. Even more now? <laughs> uh, yeah, even more now. Um, yeah, so I'm putting those up and painting them. Uh, obviously, painting Yukai and Fathom. Uh, I bought, we kind of purchased this as a hobby, because um, I like that rule. I bought uh, playmats for Judgment, because they had a deal on them. So I bought some of those, and those are being delivered to Adepticon for me to pick up, so I don't have to pay international shipping which is good uh also for guild ball i painted uh, i picked up last year at nova open some spell crow uh, small resin terrain pieces one was like a an obelisk and the other one was like a a gnarled tree and i thought they were a good size for guild ball so i picked those up and then i found them in a bin this week so i painted those and i painted in that same bin i found some other scattered terrain fences crates and other small things so i painted that as well and uh because I printed those little dirt things, dirt, <laughs> dirt golems for Guild Ball, I, I started looking through the other dirt golem files, and I realized there's enough to make a Frostgrave warband. So I'm, at this very second, printing up a uh, Frostgrave warband on one build plate in my printer. <laughs> um, the the, the loam wizard uh, made me giggle. So I, I had to... So, And I got some cool ideas for little little bits of character I can add to them. So I think, I think it'll be neat. Uh, I think that was it. So yeah, that, that's it for my, my hobby. Uh, do we want to talk about your hobby? Or do you want to go into my games? Uh, we can go to my hobby. Uh, there's not a lot. Uh, well, since last week, I have not done really much hobby per se. Uh, two nights before recording, I primed, uh, the bunch of terrain I already mentioned. And I also, uh, the only thing I did, in fact, this week was uh, I green stuffed the uh, the gaps in Cruel, the Judgment uh, Orc I have. And uh, tonight I uh, primed him. Since I primed him, I was getting to the to the skin, but uh, I won't do a brush <laughs> during the show. So, so I did that. I did. About five minutes of sculpting to patch up something I screwed up on the, the commission piece I'm working on. And that's about it with models. The rest, I, I've been doing a lot of casting still to get on par, uh, to get ready for Adepticon. But now uh, I have my box ready. I have my display almost finished. Uh, all my miniatures have been put into small baggies, uh, by my wife and my daughter. So they, they, they landed a hand to help with that. And nice. I, my wife helped me redesign my logo. I've been doing, uh, well, the, the Zanyan, uh, sketch I had previously as a logo. So he's been uh, vectorized <laughs> and modernized. So. Uh, I'm in more like a seller prep than obby uh, mode right now, uh, which means uh, the all the stuff I wanted to have for Adepticon has been unposed, 
be, be, because of work, because of the uh, house stuff, and and because of the scouting and casting. So sadly, I with only two weeks left, I don't think I'll be able to have anything prepared for Crystal Brush. I had some ideas, maybe two or three entries. I wanted to do small stuff, so it wouldn't have been that hard. But even then, I'm not sure I'll be able to even do that. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had a lot of plans, and almost none of them came out <laughs> came out well, except uh, the casting of my own miniatures. So at least that part worked. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe we can get you there again next year. Maybe things will work out. <laughs> never, never, know, never know what the future holds, Antoine. No, for sure. Oh, by... Speaking of Adepticon and my miniatures, I have the boot number where my stuff will be. Oh, nice. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it's boot 709. 709. So that's the M3 Studio boot. And I will have a a small, small display on the corner of his table <laughs> with my uh, Zonion miniatures there. So. Look for a bright green and purple onion on a small white display. And the, and the purple again, eh? Yep, yep. I choose purple because of my purple uh, <laughs> fetish. <laughs> oh, it's a fetish now, is it? Well, wow. no, not really. Man. A hobby fetish, let's say. <laughs> yeah, and all the uh, most of the miniatures have been cast in purple. I have some older uh, cast that I. I'll bring still, so I have some white and gray, but most of it is purple, so it ties in with the the cast. So that's fine. I even got a, a transport box, purple a purple transport box for uh, for my stuff. <laughs> yeah. So and I'll be at the boot uh, myself uh, two or three times during the weekend. Uh, so if people want to talk with me, oh, I'll be happy to talk with anybody I can meet during the weekend, but uh, finding the French Canadian through the one of the French Canadian a specific one during the show might not be easy. So I'll just uh, give away the time I'll be at the boot, so that might be easier to, if people want, for I don't know why, talk to me specifically. I'll be at the boot Thursday uh, from... Uh, start to noon, f- Friday from 2 to 4, or from noon to 4, something like that. And uh, Sunday uh, from start to noon also. So most of the time just before or around noon on three of the four days. Okay. Well, I'll know where to find you then. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> we have a ch- a, s- a shared uh, spreadsheet a shared with all that info in it, yeah. so so you uh, you would already know <laughs> how. <laughs> this is true. We also are sharing a room, so. Yeah, but that's only I- during the night. Well, what else would I be looking for, you buddy? Mm. It depends. Depends how much French you want. There's G, if he wants more French than just Canadian French. Well, that's true. <laughs> he he might be a little too French for my taste, though. <laughs> uh, sorry. Sometimes it's so hard to resist you. Mm. All right. So that is your. Uh, that's that's your it. Quote, that's unquote, my hobby. hobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cutting NDF, uh, casting. Miscasting, miscasting a lot. Uh, for people who want cheap miniatures and have, uh, can handle working putty, I will have a big box of miscast. So you can pick whatever you want in it for a buck during the show. So some of the miscast are like, there's just a, a bigger bubble that I cannot, uh, pass over. So they, they went to the miscast box. So if you want cheap stuff and are not afraid to just fill up some gaps, uh, <laughs> you can get the cheap purple miniatures. <laughs> My favorite kind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> that was my plug. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Plug away. You are always welcome to plug on our podcast, Antoine. And uh, that's it for real this time for my hobby. So your games, Mr. Paul. Yeah, I played uh, a bunch of Guild Ball last week. Sorry, I'm kind of cursing here because I just slipped with paint over a color I just finished. So I was like, oh, that wet blend is awesome. Now let me ruin it by running another color. <laughs> um, yeah, so I played a bunch of games of Guild Ball. Uh, I played uh, last Wednesday against our buddy Little Antoine, who uh, was my teammate actually at the New England team tournament. And he was playing Farmers. And uh, I have not really played Farmers since last year, since the last edition of the game. Um, and they'd gotten buffs, uh, last week in an errata. I, I did not quite realize how, uh, brutal they would be in close combat. And I got victimized for it. <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> it was a good game. I had lots of fun. Um, the scars should heal soon. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was pretty ouchy. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I don't know what the final score was. It was probably something like... Oh, actually, no, I think I started okay. So I think it was 12 to 8 in the end. Oh, that's but, not too bad. Yeah. Um, well, I think it, I think I started off strong, and then I just lost the ball and, and couldn't really get it back and couldn't generate momentum, so I was, like, momentum starved the whole game. What were you playing? I was playing Fish. Oh, yeah. So okay. he, he was playing a Grange lineup, and uh, I was playing... Yukai? Yukai, yeah, Yukai. Uh, Yukai, Fathom, Angel, Vetsakana, Tentacles, and Grayscales. Um, first time playing Yukai. Cool, cool captain. I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> and I hadn't played Fish in almost a year. So I went in with like the wrong type of mindset, so it didn't work out well. And then on Friday, I played two more games. Our buddy uh, Daniel Arsenault came over. He, uh, he uh, ventured out to my house. And we played a couple games here. So I played one game against his morticians with my fisherman. And I won that. I don't remember what the score was. Uh, I Probably 12-7 12, 12, or something for me. I don't think he scored more than one goal. Maybe it was maybe it was higher. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. So I, I won that. Um, and then, you know, being my second game with Yukai, I played him much better I found and I managed to pull off a couple of shenanigans uh, with him that left Daniel frustrated and uh, not necessarily frustrated in a bad way but he was just like oh what the hell you know yeah gutchas yeah gutchas exactly uh, but I but I did explain what everyone did before the game so I, yeah but seeing it done is not the same <laughs> yeah yeah and then uh, we re-racked uh, two new teams, set up a new board, and he played his blacksmiths versus my um, order. And it was a, a much closer game. It may have been like 12-10 for me in the end. Um, or it was 12-10 or 12-8. Anyway, the the amount of jank that team has is hilarious. The order. Was it your first game with the, with the Ball of Light, the new ball? Yeah, it was my first game with them in Season 4. So, uh, the the ball shenanigans are hilarious. Uh, the fact that I missed most of my passes probably made the game last longer than it should have because <laughs> I kept flubbing stuff. Uh, but it was it was a fun game. You know, great opponent, and it's, it's it was nice because I don't really get to play him. Uh, his schedule: he's a teacher, so he starts early, which means he plays early on game night. And, you know, he goes home usually about the time where I'm arriving. Because he also lives, uh, he lives in the west like I do, but he lives farther out. So, yeah. it's it's a long drive for him. And he gets up at uh, crazy o'clock in the morning to go to work. Yep. So, I get yeah. it. That's why I play with, uh, with Daniel during only during the summer, when I have my uh, Friday off. That's the only time I'm able to play with him. Yeah, that's, uh, actually, yeah, because he has summers off, eh, being a teacher. Yep. That's a clever plan. I like it. I'm going to steal that plan. Yeah, you are off most Fridays, so that's, that might work out for you, too. Yep. We can have a... We we would need just a, a four-people, a four-person 
with uh, Friday off and we could uh, have some uh, gaming Fridays. Yeah. I thought you were going to say we're just going to need a schedule, like we're going to share him, you know? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, like, uh, like divorcees with their children, right? Yeah. Every second Saturday, every second Saturday, Friday is mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's not where I was going. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, great, great opponent. Um, oh, he's fun to play again. Yeah. And it was, it was funny. Uh, and then there's a francophone and I'm obviously not, um, though I do speak French. Uh, but it only dawned on me, I think, after he left that day, that I don't think at any point in the day I spoke French, and at no point in the day did he speak English. Uh, he can speak English, absolutely, and he speaks it very well. Uh, but it just never... I, I mean, he knows I speak French, so I guess it's never occurred to us. But it was, it was pretty funny. One of the one of the coolest things about gaming in Quebec. I mean, there had to be some advantage to being here, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it's not the snow for sure. No, I... Not the snow and not the politics. Well, uh, well. we're not we're not a pol we're not a political podcast. No, <laughs> no we're not. So let's I, not go down I'll that path it. again. I, I don't want to get uh, chastised by a listener again. No, no, no more political reviews of the show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that still scars me. Yeah, mind you, I still think it's funny. Yes, it is, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh yeah this is not going well <laughs> I'm uh I've got a little tool from uh, Reaper Miniatures to uh unplug dropper bottles hmm but isn't that just called a toothpick well it's a it's a metal pin with a, a skull on the end to hold it by okay <laughs> <laughs> and it's the diameter of a dropper bottle right it's the perfect diameter yeah, yeah. And they sell them for a couple bucks. Yeah. I picked one up at a show once because I needed something to unplug my dropper bottles. But uh, <laughs> for some reason, it is not working. I think at one point I I unplugged the dropper bottle of this thing, but I think the needle must have gone sideways and gone through the the plastic of the nozzle. For that specific bottle. Yeah, for that specific bottle. So it's... Uh, every time I try putting the, the needle in, it's like deflecting to the side. Hmm. It's okay, brute force one today. I I just now have multiple holes in that nozzle. I guess it'll be fine. Yeah. On my side, I had no game. I set up uh, to do some more uh, solo play of an aerial, and it, it didn't pan out. I didn't have the time to do it. And we were supposed to play a game. Yeah, we were also supposed to play a game, but. Uh, it did it happen? Yeah, I wouldn't shut up long enough for us to play. I, uh, uh, I was talking to you, so it was a fun evening, but it was not a gaming evening. <laughs> we need some of those once in a while too. Yeah, we'd had uh, we'd had long days. So. Yeah, but my table is still set up, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, try it out this week. I've reread some of the rules and. Uh, found a scenario that will be good to try out the game. The only bad part with it, uh, like a bunch of other games, I could easily solo play, but that one as a uh, like combat, you have a secret mechanic in it, so you need to, to decide how many offensive stone and defensive stones you pick in your uh, combat pool. Kind of hard to do that if uh, you know what you picked for the other side, eh? Yeah, so I, th the first time I did it, I was just doing half and half. <laughs> but you're losing part of that mind play game <laughs> when doing it solo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like people that play chess solo, and I'm like, I don't, I don't understand how that works. Yeah, but with chess, you could just, just go for optimal move, maybe. But I don't see how I could go optimal <laughs> with yeah. picking... Uh, <laughs> Attack values. <laughs> I get you. That, yeah, that's why I mostly went fifth, like half and half. Or if there was a clear advantage, uh, I, I move more offensive or defensive, depending on the case. But most of the time, it was just uh, <laughs> fifty percent. <laughs> it made it a bit weird. 
I must be honest. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine so. Yeah, well, let's face it, these games are designed to be multiplayer, right? So. Uh, yes and no, like, uh, I want to uh, try out, what's the name, Rangers of Shadow Deep. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, not mainly to play solo, but to play uh, co-op, but to try out the game and learn it, I'll, I'll use the, the solo part, but it's to find uh, a fantasy skirmish that I can play with my son to introduce him to more of the the mini side and not just board game rules. And we could, like, it doesn't need a lot of miniatures, so he could choose uh, the minis he wants to to, tr- to use for his, uh, his own rangers and his own team. So, uh, I have the PDF. I need to read it and get it to the table. I've I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah. That's is that also Osprey? No, it's the same author as Frostgrave, but he self published that one, I think. I don't know if there's a physical version or just a PDF. I don't know. If it's it. just a PDF it's easy to self publish. If there's a physical book I, I don't know who uh who's the the distributor. The publisher. Yeah. But yeah, I, I've watched uh a couple of uh, hash barkers from Gerudo Miniature. Some playthroughs uh, he did? Yeah, some of the, the playthroughs. And read some of the reviews of the game. So, what I might be missing is some of the generic monsters. But oh, I'll, I'll sh- I'm sure I could find some possible proxies or find cheap plastic, like Dungeons & Dragons miniatures or stuff like that. To fill out. Yeah, I know, I know a guy. <laughs> I think uh, he could help you with that stuff. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, I keep... um. One of my buddies is... Oh, that's totally not what I thought it was. <laughs> Sorry, the realization that the thing you thought were, you were going to paint like a lantern isn't a lantern? Um, hmm. I don't really know what that is, though. Might it just be a strange lantern? No, it's the thing um, on Yukai that the the bird on the left is carrying. You can't see it on their factory or on their web store pictures because they broke them on the web store model. <laughs> um, but it's got like a thing he's carrying, and I thought it was like a lantern, but it's not. It appears to be like maybe water buckets stacked one on top of the other. With mm. Yeah, it's really weird. He seems to have a lot of weird stuff on him. <laughs> Well, the, of small accessories. The model is um, is pretty busy. Yeah, yeah, except Morn. The other three captains are really busy. All of them. And, and I'm not trying to imply it's a necessarily a negative thing. It's just a fact. Yeah, like Killbomb model are already pretty busy. Yeah, they're the Robbly Field uh, miniatures of the, <laughs> yeah. of the gaming world. Pouches everywhere. Belts everywhere. Belts. Belt buckles everywhere. Like, I don't know why they need bandoliers. There's no guns, but everyone's got them, essentially. Yeah. But I, I guess that makes for interesting models to paint, because all these little details. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know everyone would agree with me that makes it interesting, but I'm trying to be positive here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what I wouldn't give for some artwork for this guy. But there's artwork, you know? Well, it's card art, but I don't think it shows full body, right? I'm pretty sure we saw it in one of the videos, or there's probably a still of it, the, the full full art. But <laughs> that's not something you can just uh, find out super quick. There's probably some digging to be done. No, I'll go searching then. Because like, <laughs> like some, of the, some of the details are pretty soft, um, so... Like, there's a bunch of ropes or something all mashed together. I, I can't see what's what. Which is pretty strange for a resin model. Yeah, but the resin's pretty soft. Okay. Um, Like, Yukai's got a lot of flex and give to him. I'm going to try black washing the area to see if I can't... Make the detail pop. Yeah, more clearly define what the heck it is I'm looking at. Yeah, that's helping. 
Because the um, his staff is kind of like a a shrine priest staff with the like the big metal ring with the small rings wrapped around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know what I mean, right? The the Japanese monk yeah, staff. Yeah, it, it, it rings a bell. Um, but there's also like birds on it and fish hanging from one end and buckets hanging from the. <laughs> it's just weird. So I'm not taking anything for granted. Those crazy Steam Forge guys. Doing their crazy Steam Forge things. All right, we're rambling. Yep. Uh, we're almost uh, we're like forty-five minutes in, and we've rambled a lot. So we don't actually have a, a a topic topic, right? No, we don't. So you want to just talk about some news items, and we'll see yeah. where the conversation takes us. Okay. Sure. Uh, I'll start with an easy one that uh, we don't have much info about yet. Uh, but we'll talk about it next week too. I just want, uh, people to be able to jump in early. Uh, by the time of re, uh, of release, uh, our friend Thierry Usar from TH Miniature will have launched his, uh, new Kickstarter for his Swamp series of terrain. So he has been uh, raising teaser of the, uh, the pieces, uh, in the past weeks. And he's launching on Thursday, so maybe, maybe not on the release, but on the release day, uh, the the Kickstarter will be up, probably later in the day after we've released the show. But uh, you can go check it out. Uh, the pieces are really good, and just judging from uh, other pieces we have from previous set, the quality and the sculpting is super good. So. He's just gotten better since then. He got uh, better equipment too for his casting. I've been talking with him a bit. So uh, it's really worth it. And usually the prices are pretty good. And with a Kickstarter, it's even better than the, the regular release, uh, retail price. So I can only vouch for him. Yeah, we had a lot of stuff for the for the gaming club, right? For him? Yep, yep. We, we bought a lot of it. We, he was one of our sponsors from last year. Uh, Guild Ball, uh, the national. So we gave out some of his terrain at that time. He's sponsoring uh, us again this year too. So I'm happy to, uh, to chat about his pieces. And even without uh, the sponsoring, I would still be talking about it because he, uh, well, he's, he's a local. Yep. He's a good guy for the community. Um, mm-hmm. And he makes good products. So there's, yeah, there's no reason happy, not to talk about it, right? Yeah. And he's happy to help. Uh, either at shows or to just give tips uh, and and chat. So uh, super good, uh, super good buddy. So look at that. Uh, I won't put a, a link in the show notes this time. So you'll have to look for TH Miniatures on Facebook or on Google. And I'm sure you'll find a link to the Kickstarter at that time. But uh, next week, uh, we'll be able to talk uh, more fully about it because we'll have the the up Kickstarter uh, campaign running, so we'll have a, a list of the uh, different I- items available and stuff like that. So we will be talking about it again next week. Cool. So after that, by talking about Kickstarter, we have a Kickstarter by Gribo Games called the Cutie Malls, the Northern Clan, Northern Clans. So uh, Gribo do they usually do? Uh, Blood Ball proxies, and in most of in some of the recent Kickstarter, they they add like side miniatures, just additional stuff for cute small animals. Uh, but they were add-ons to the bigger teams. This time, they decided to uh, to go all in, and it's five teams. Or I I think with the uh, the unlocks, it's more than that now. But it's all teams of cute, small, round chibi animals for any type of team you want. So they have the Ursulf's teams, which are probably like Norse. They are small, cuddly round bears. They have penguins, which are, they call them the pin kings. They are kind of Vikings, penguins. There are uh, walruses that (laughs) they're the, Dwarless team, so dwarf walrus. There's a two uh, walrus players. 
instead of slayers. <laughs> With their mustaches painted orange. Okay, hold on, I'm loading this because... There's the oh, P-Orcs we already mentioned in the past because they were part of a, a side project, but now they're fully into oh, it. Oh, frig. These There's things are amazing. El Kittens for uh, Warrior of Chaos. Uh, the Ogbringer, which are a bunch of, bunch of mutated uh, rabbits and goats, which are in their gold teams. They're Chaos Fluffers, which are small, still rabbits and goats. Like mutated beast, pretty beastmen, like mutated rabbits with horns. <laughs> There's so many oh, cool miniatures. Okay, listeners, if you have no interest in Blood Bowl and no interest in chibi miniatures, you still have to go look at this. This thing is amazing. Yeah, one of the amazing part, uh, if you look at the the bears, the balls are small. Uh, they, f- how do you say the? I kind of don't want to say the the name in French because it sounds oh, like uh, a bad se- word. Baby seals. Seals. Yeah, baby seals. The, the balls are baby seals. <laughs> and they're gnawing on them or playing with them. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. And we're not the only one to think that because the, <laughs> the project is doing amazingly well. They Holy. were looking for 2,000 <laughs> euros. They are now at over 62,000 euros. Uh, the project was not long. By the time of release, there will be only six days left to go. So uh, don't wait too long once you hear about it. Uh, and uh, run to it, pledge, get some uh, cute animals, whatever you do with them. <laughs> I'm sure they could... Like, if you don't take the one with balls, they could also fit well for a small uh, first grave warband like uh, Paul was doing with the mud men <laughs> or they could proxy with a bunch of other stuff they they would mix well with other chibi miniatures out uh, out in the, the market too so lots of ways to find use for them yeah they are awesome looking I, I can't stress that enough wow yeah really nice <laughs> I mean, he always has really nice stuff, he, you know. Yeah. And I I have zero interest in Blood Bowl, and I always look at his miniatures thinking, I wish I'd like Blood Bowl, because I would buy his stuff. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and it's for the first time I'm almost <laughs> thinking about still pledging, and maybe just playing Blood Bowl just to play them. Uh, that and the new Halflings. The, the new Huffing teams by Game Workshop, they, they were just teased. They're not out yet, but they are looking good. Yeah, you played Halflings before, didn't you? Yeah, I, I still have them. That's my painted... Uh, my only painted the Blood Bowl team. Yeah, I played the Vampires, um, or I tried. <laughs> that team was terrible. Yeah, I was playing Huffing. I can comment on any other terrible team. Yeah, well... My problem was that the team was inconsistent, right? You'd have games where they did really well, and then the next game you'd roll really badly and the vampires would leave uh, the field and go out for a bite. <coughs> Which um, meant they were attacking the crowd or whatever. The, uh, mm-hmm. the the problem was that the players left in the field, the thralls are like, so bad without the vampires. It was just... Yeah. <laughs> it's not a team I've played against in the past, so I, I don't know the rules. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just remember, this was a long time ago, of course. I, I played them back in college or whatever for just after, and it was not a joyous experience. <laughs> and, and Blood Bowl is, you know, a long game. Or it was, at least. Maybe it's faster now. So The, the, the game has not sped up, but there are uh, variants, uh, faster variants. Well, isn't there, like, a new variant that just people have started playing? Yep, yep. Okay. Um, well, I'll have to say, you know, when you're playing the the default variant, or the default uh, rules, and things go poorly early on, uh, it's, a, it's a long three hours. <sighs> Just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay, so going from cute animals, uh, we are keeping the animal team, but we are leaving the cute part out. 
So the next item I want to talk about is by RN Studio. So that's a, if I remember correctly, it's a Spanish uh, scouting studio. They do 3D miniatures. When we were doing the new show, we were talking, we talked about them uh, multiple times. They do mostly fantasy stuff. Uh, and they're doing uh, independent, like individual characters. And usually they are really nice. Often they do limited uh, runs, so we were not talk- talking about them that often. Uh, but this time they are just out. So what they are, it's a series called the Animal Explorers. It's five anthropomorphic adventurers, uh, a snake lady, a wolf, a cat, and a crocodile. All of different uh, variety and they look good. They are really, uh, they do the poses. Dynam- dynamic pose. Yep. The Wolverine crocodile guy is kind of hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are, uh, like 32, 35 scale miniatures. They're generic size, either for war games or RPGs. They ship on 25 rounds, 25 meter round bases. Pretty good. The the models are pretty big compared to the bases, so they are on the tall side of thing. And they each, uh, most of them are sixteen euros, except the crocodile, which is a bit more at eighteen, or you can get the full pack for sixty. So they, they're not cheap individually, but they are big. They're they're going to be a nice casted resin, so you'll have uh, nice, well detailed miniatures. They're yeah. I mean, they're not cheap. They're not. They're not hideously expensive either for for what they are. No, no, no. So the, they're not extraordinarily expensive, but they're not on the cheap side like we we see sometimes uh, with other British uh, the, the British or Spanish company like Ma, uh, Ma Miniatures, which do incredibly cheap stuff. Yeah. Uh, on the price side, I, I don't mean about the quality. Yeah. Well, yeah, cheap doesn't necessarily mean quality. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Like incredibly affordable miniatures. Yeah, <laughs> that is a better way to... Yeah. So, the RN ECDO are more of the boutique style. So, uh, tons of detail, uh, low low number of release, instead of uh, like a mass fantasy army <laughs> release. And lastly... Uh, model by Creepy Tables. It's a dryad bust. Did, uh, yeah, I, I removed one. That's why. Oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> yeah, so this is a one tenth scale bust. Uh, it also comes with a print when you order it. It's on pre order right now. It will start shipping like next week. So it's go- gonna be a little fast. It's a limited run. There's only 50 kits available. So, uh, you go fast. What it is, it's uh, a dryad. Well, I think dryads are female by default. So Yeah, you, they're all female. She, she looks more plant-like than tree-like. Like the warmer fantasy dryads have been like really three people, or she's more of a generic vegetation dryad. I would say like she has a, her airs are huge leaf. She has a flower uh, on her head. Her clothes are made of tree bark. Yeah, um, yeah okay. and she is holding. Uh, it's okay. a hedgehog, right? Is it a hedgehog? Yeah, I give it a hedgehog. Yep. I don't wait for the model to rotate so I can see. Yeah, she's holding. I think two, in fact. <laughs> two hedgehogs. Yes, yes, there appear to be a pair of hedgehogs. Yeah. So, she's a nice model. She she's, would probably be interesting to paint because you can do so much with the vegetation on her, yep. color-wise. And you have the hedgehog to add the inner and natural touch, like, by doing more crazy, like, uh, autumn's autumn color on the the plants but you just go generic browns uh, on the hedgehog or you could do the reverse and paint her well, more regular and go crazy on the color on the small creature yeah plus there's all that bark on her and stuff so there's just a lot of detail potential there 
Yes. Yeah. So it's a really nice model. Uh, as we've mentioned, there's not many available. The cost is 49 euros. Which doesn't really seem out of place for what it is. No, not for the size and uh, for the fact that it's so limited. So I think that's a pretty good price. Yeah, I would agree. And that's it for the releases I wanted to talk about. So three releases and a preview. <laughs> it's been a while since we had that many items to talk about, actually. Yes, it was. <laughs> so. Mind you, that's usually by intent as well. But... Yeah, we don't want to fill the show with that. We were doing that before and that. That became tedious to do. Uh, unless, of course, we have nothing else to talk about. In which case, we can fill the show with that. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit what we did today. <laughs> that that was kind of my point, yeah. Yeah. So, how did your uh, model uh, advance tonight? Uh, I, uh... I'm having some trouble. Let's just put it that way. Oh, that's not good. No, it's... I don't know what's going on with, like, some of the Yukai stuff. So painting it is difficult, because I'm looking at it, I'm like, why are there random straps around the staff? I'm like, maybe they're not straps, maybe they're metal loops, uh, but they seem to be resting like they were leather straps. But they're not really, like, like a hand grip or anything. It's like, let's randomly wrap a piece of leather around one end, and then another piece of leather three inches away from that for no reason. Like, uh, uh, that, uh, sculptor's prerogative. I feel like putting a piece of leather there, so I will. <laughs> So, trying to figure out what I'm painting is proving to be challenging. Maybe it's time for a little break, too. I, I painted this guy a lot today. He and Fathom uh, got a lot of work done on them. I, I would say I've probably got uh, another maybe two hours max, and then they're both done. So, it's not bad. Yeah. And I'm also kind of at impasse with the birds and the fish that he's carrying. I, I got no idea what color to paint fish or birds. <laughs> I think it's time to take a break and look at reference pictures or <laughs> the illustration yeah. for him. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I will paint uh, Moana's fish. Look. I mean, Fathom. <laughs> it's but funny. It's the Moana variant for sure. Yeah. Well, the uh, my daughter recognized it right away. <laughs> As she should. Yeah, she's like, uh, yeah, that's Maui's fish hook. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're not wrong. It's like, where's Maui? I'm like, there is no Maui. And I'm like, well, actually, that's not true. There is a Maui. <laughs> I don't have that team. So she's like, well, you're going to get it, right? Like, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. But then she was kind of annoyed with me because, you know, you can't have Maui or you can't have Moana without Maui, right? No, especially if she, has, if she has his work. Well, exactly. And then it came all kinds of weird questions about uh, Maui and Moana's relationship. <laughs> and did they get married? Did they have kids? I'm like, I don't know. Like, you saw the movie. I don't think they're together in the movie at the end. They're no, friends. No, I don't think so. Like, they're friends. That's it. Yeah, but, you know, she should really have more Maui's you know, kids. I'm like... I Maybe she doesn't want to have Maui's kids. Well, why wouldn't she want to have kids? I... Oh, this is a complicated conversation to have with a five-year-old. <laughs> like... like, hey, wait, Muriel, is that a new Barbie? What? Yeah, let's talk about that instead. Let's... When I look at my wife for help, you know, get me out of here. <laughs> I'm a father. I'm not supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be the one having serious conversations with my child. <laughs> I've seen enough 80s TV to know that. <laughs> I'm here for comic relief and nothing else. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice way to think about it. That's what I signed up for. You can't take that away yeah, from me. Yeah, I don't think that's what you got, but still. <laughs> don't poo poo in my Cheerios. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, on my side, I'm happy to say I finished painting a bar garbage bag. I was going to say, did you finish the garbage bag? <laughs> yeah, almost right away when I. When I talked about it first, and uh, I've been some uh, been doing some small, small progress on gutter. It's like achievement unlocked. Garbage bag painted. Yep. Yeah, and I lined the big uh, uh, beverage dispenser. 
I am never remembering the right word. Vending machine. The vending machine. I had no idea what a beverage dispenser was either for a second there. Like, oh, wait, the vending machine. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'll need to wear a brush the, the red on it. So there's a tiny work yeah, yeah, on all the, the stuff I had out, but nothing completed except the garbage bag. Yeah, well, I think the uh, the vending machine was done at a at like point two resolution, which means yeah, uh, airbrush is really the ideal thing to do. Mm-hmm. And you can brush paint, but it's more challenging. Yeah, already I did some zenital and it catch the uh, the ridges, the ridges a lot. So for the red, I'll be more direct to cover some of it. Yeah. I need to remember that when I I paint uh, 3D print. uh, 3D printed stuff. And and let's be just perfectly clear here it's a FDM it's not a resin printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, we wouldn't have the same challenge if it was resin. Yeah. I know I'm letting you down buddy. I'll, I'll get on. I'll get on <laughs> oh <that>. yeah. <laughs> Free terrain free cool terrain and i won't complain for sure all i'm waiting on is for you to get your pulp city miniatures and we can start playing yeah well i get the i get the impression that whenever they arrive it won't take them long to paint them no hopefully and if they take their time too much uh and they're not there by adepticon uh right when we get back from adepticon i'll paint my second team yeah, I was really hoping to have them buy Adepticon so I could take them there and, and paint them. Mm-hmm. Because I usually do a lot of painting at Adepticon. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if I'll be doing much on my side. My schedule seems busy, but uh, I'll at least bring some stuff to work on. <coughs> Pardon me. Or sculpting. Or both. <laughs> Still, we're four guys in the car, so... I'll limit myself. <laughs> well, the thing is, not all of us needs to bring paints and stuff, right? So, if I bring 30, 40 jars of paint, I mean, I probably have the colors you want or something similar. Unless you've got magic colors, you know. If you have a 20-year-old bottle of, you know, whatever, some random GW color doesn't exist anymore, I obviously can't help Deadly you with that. Deadly Nightshade. Yes, exactly. Then I can't <laughs> help you with that. No. You know, that being said... Uh, any recent P3 paint or whatever, or, you know, the more common GW magical washes, uh, I'll have, so. No, I paint all by mix anyway, so. Yeah, whatever I know. The color is, is there. It's gonna work. Mr. Fancy Pants. No. It's Mr. Too Lazy to mark down and always have to mix because there's no color that fits. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I, it's uh, not being fancy. I have a it's similar being... situation. Yeah, being my own worst enemy. <laughs> I um, I was painting a Yukai and Fathom to match my pre-existing fisherman models, mm-hmm. and I just realized that while talking to you, I I stopped doing that and I started like adding more highlights, pushing contrast, like detailing stuff that isn't detailed on the other you know fourteen models in the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the gutter I'm working on right now. Uh, that's one of the reason why she's taking so long. Is I can color match with my other butchers. Well, yeah. at least I, I wrote down the colors for my fish. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> I, I was smart enough this one time to do it. Um, So that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm like, oh, no, it needs more contrast. Push more. So I'm like highlighting now in white on the blues to really make it pop. Except it just dawned on me. I, I didn't do that on any of the other ones. So now these guys are gonna look different than the rest of the team. In fact, they even look different than each other because I I did things differently. One I did one way, one I did another because I couldn't remember or rather I'd written down what I'd done. I'm like, oh that can't be right. I must use this other color instead and just marked it down wrong. <laughs> no, it turns out I'd marked it down right. <laughs> so yeah, my blues aren't quite the same. And yeah, they're they're nothing. Oh my goodness, they're nothing alike. Oh, well. Um. Yeah, that will be problematic for me when I paint my navigators. If I want to match them to 
Angel and Siren. That you painted from your uh just the, the starter set, right? for the demo set, yeah. Mm. That they won't fit. I did a simple job on them, so at least in that case, I think I have a main color straight from a pot without too much mix. That might save me, but it's just a might. I'm not sure. Well, I guess that's uh, that's a story for another podcast. Yep. Oh, yeah, because I am not uh, even near getting to paint them. Yeah, but also we are rambling something fierce. Yep, yep. So, sir, it has been a pleasure as always. Yes, it has. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Yeah, and bye, geeks. Thanks for listening to Geeks of the North. If you want to contact us, you can email us at geeksofthenorth at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash geeksofthenorth, or follow us on Twitter at geeksofthenorth. You can follow me, Paul, at PRFilio, Antoine at Eltonio Berg, Steve at B underscore Steve and if you really feel the need I guess you can follow Yom he's at Yomasta Breaks and Outro Music by Ladrav you can listen to them at ladrav.bandcamp.com see you next time geeks Thank you for checking out United Geeks Network Family Member. If you enjoyed it and are looking for other online media with a geek culture slant, head over to unitedgeeksnetwork.com where you will find the Gaming Careers Podcast, the resource for people looking to find their fit in the gaming industry. You will hear game industry professionals talk about how they succeed in today's competitive environment and how you can do the same. The United Geeks Network. You can broadcast your geekiness at unitedgeeksnetwork.com.